Hi everyone, Dr. Marta Perez here, OBGYN and Maternal Fetal Medicine Fellow. Thanks for coming to my channel where I put out educational videos every Friday. Don't forget to hit subscribe so that you don't miss anything. Today is another video in my series on COVID-19 and pregnancy. I have a whole playlist full of videos throughout the pandemic on this issue. And today I'm gonna cover some frequently asked questions about the rest of your pregnancy after having COVID in pregnancy. Let's get started. So in my last video about COVID in pregnancy, I talked about my experience having COVID-19 in pregnancy at 24 weeks. I am fully vaccinated and boosted. If you want more information, please head to that episode. This is an update episode. I am filming this at the beginning of August. I'm prepping some videos ahead of time, <laughs> so you may see this a little later. But a common question after I recorded that video was, what about management of pregnancy after you have COVID during pregnancy? So I wanted to address some of the really common questions about that. The other thing I want to make sure you know is that I'm giving general recommendations during the recording of these this video. Those recommendations could change over time and they may not apply to you individually. Giving general recommendations for the general population will never replace the individual recommendations that happen between your doctor or healthcare provider and you. So if you have questions, you can list them below and I'll try to answer as many as I can. But also please don't hesitate to talk to your own physician about your specific case to get a personalized medical recommendation. The other thing I want to tell you is that in order to make this video, I'm following recommendations from the Society for Maternal Fetal Medicine and their current recommendations about management of pregnancy and COVID-19. Those recommendations could change over time. I'm going to put the link to them down in the show notes so that you can follow along and check on them. But those are the recommendations I'm using. Again, they're general recommendations by a major medical society, but may not apply to your individual situation. Okay, so we're gonna cover how pregnancy management or recommendations might change if you've had COVID during your pregnancy. And again, medicine is changing all the time, especially with a relatively new <laughs> pandemic, even though it feels like it's been forever. I will say that a lot of the data that we have about pregnancy outcomes in pregnancy may not apply to vaccinated individuals and there are always new variants coming out. For example, there was data that came out about a year ago showing that there was an increased rate of stillbirth among patients who had COVID during pregnancy. But this data was during the Delta wave. And although they couldn't capture the amount of people who were vaccinated in that study, that was a time where very few pregnant patients were fully vaccinated against COVID. So a reasonable assumption is that that may not apply to fully vaccinated people right now where the dominant variant is not the Delta variant. In fact, we have some data showing that the risk of complications during the Delta wave was higher than the risk of complications with getting COVID in pregnancy during the Omicron wave. And certainly we know that being vaccinated against an illness is gonna decrease the complications associated with that illness for people who have it compared to unvaccinated individuals. Again, if you have not been vaccinated against COVID, get that done right now. Question number one, does having COVID during early pregnancy increase the risk of miscarriage? We don't have great data on this, but the data that we do have appears to be a no on that, especially with a mild infection. What about the risk of having a congenital anomaly? So sometimes when someone gets an infection during pregnancy, that infection passes on to a fetus and causes a congenital anomaly. A common example of that is Zika the Zika virus. However, we have not seen data to show that there is an increase in congenital anomalies associated with having COVID during early pregnancy. However, this data can be hard to find sometimes. There overall appears to be a low risk that COVID virus passes on to a fetus. That risk might be possible at about one to 4%, but the only data we have is from the third trimester around the time of delivery. So, Overall, we don't believe that COVID increases the risk of birth defects or congenital anomalies. Does COVID infection during pregnancy increase the rates of having a stillbirth or a preterm birth during pregnancy? Again, overall, our data are not super robust on this. And critically, a lot of the data we do have is missing major aspects. For example, what gestational age did the person have COVID related to the outcomes? was the person vaccinated compared to the outcomes. And then of course, we're starting to see some differences in the variance and certain outcomes. So the data we have is not super robust, but I will go over what we have. Like I mentioned, a large epidemiologic survey showed an increased risk of stillbirth among people who had had COVID during the Delta wave. Now we don't know their vaccination status, which 
at that time in the population was overall low. Also, right now when I'm recording this, Delta is not a predominant variant. Omicron has very much taken over. So it is difficult to interpret how that finding relates to individuals who have COVID during the Omicron variant and have some immunity, either from past infections or from vaccination or from both, and get COVID during their current pregnancy. Overall, there have been findings that COVID-19 is associated with some, you know, fibrin deposition around the placenta, which is sciencey talk for basically not high quality placental maternal interface tissue. And so I definitely find the fact that they found this as a really great recommendation to be vaccinated against COVID during pregnancy because the likelihood of severe infections and the likelihood of especially negative outcomes with the placenta are going to be higher for unvaccinated individuals who don't have immunity and who have higher viremia, meaning virus in their body. What about preterm birth? So individuals that have severe COVID are at risk of having a preterm birth as a result of that severe COVID. But the data that we have now about mild to moderate infections and their association with preterm birth have not clearly associated that having a mild COVID infection results in a preterm birth. So overall, yes, severe COVID and very symptomatic COVID that requires hospitalization definitely associated with perinatal complications and preterm birth, but we don't really have great data about mild to moderate infections in the setting of vaccinated previously vaccinated individuals. And so I really can't say whether or not the risk for preterm birth is increased. Okay, so given all of those things that I just said about COVID and pregnancy and what we see or don't see with all that nuanced information about timing and variants and vaccination status, how will me having COVID in pregnancy affect the rest of my prenatal care and delivery? So let's talk about prenatal care first. So for individuals who get COVID-19 very early in their pregnancy in the first trimester or early second trimester, there are a few considerations. One is doing a detailed anatomy scan to be sure to rule out the possibility of birth defects. Now the good news is detailed anatomy scans are pretty routine and most individuals get routine anatomy scans as a normal part of their prenatal care. So I definitely wouldn't skip that. In addition, there is the possibility of doing more ultrasounds, checking on the weight of the fetus during ongoing pregnancy after having COVID-19, especially for individuals who had moderate or severe COVID-19 during their early pregnancy. And this consideration is especially for individuals who had more severe disease during their early pregnancy, moderate disease, severe disease. For those that had mild and minimally symptomatic disease, I think you could go either way on monitoring the growth of the baby with a growth sound. What I'm seeing most commonly is one single third trimester check-in for the baby's weight and growth during that time. Sometimes in OB, we do something called antenatal surveillance. Antenatal surveillance is the term for doing non-stress tests or biophysical profiles once or twice a week for a certain pregnancy complication. If you're someone who has certain pregnancy complications like gestational diabetes on medication, hypertension on medication, you may be familiar with non-stress testing and antenatal surveillance. At this time, there doesn't seem to be a need or a recommendation for antenatal surveillance during pregnancy. Another question I'm getting a lot of the time is whether someone should take a baby aspirin each day after having a COVID infection in pregnancy. And the answer to that is that right now, neither ACOG or SMFM are recommending that routinely, and therefore I'm not routinely recommending it to my patients. However, as baby aspirin in pregnancy is a kind of a hot topic in OBGYN. There are reasons that aspirin is recommended in pregnancy for actually a lot of individuals to decrease the chances of preeclampsia. There's a whole list of mild risk factors and moderate risk factors. And if you have the certain combination, it is recommended for you. There is very low risk of aspirin in pregnancy. It's not associated with problems with blood clotting around the time of delivery or anything. So it's generally considered a benign, low risk or beneficial intervention that may be recommended for some individuals. Again, not routinely, routinely recommended just for having COVID earlier in pregnancy. I'm not taking it after having COVID earlier in pregnancy because I don't have any additional risk factors, but definitely talk to your doctor about aspirin. Overall, I feel like this decision is between a doctor and patient and definitely has nuance for the individual scenario. I'm also hoping that someone somewhere is studying this so that we can know going forward whether 
aspirin it should be recommended or not for people who had COVID during pregnancy. The next question is about timing of delivery or delivery route. So first of all, there's no indication for a C-section just because someone had COVID during their pregnancy. So if you've had COVID and you are recovered, or even if you actively had have COVID at the time of delivery, but have very mild symptoms, that alone is not a reason for a C-section. But of course, there are plenty of other reasons for a C-section. By the same vein, there is not currently a recommendation for delivery at a specific time point or week in pregnancy just because someone had COVID to begin with. Now, there are a lot of reasons that there are recommendations that someone have a delivery at a certain week of pregnancy due to their medical complications or individual scenario. However, just having COVID earlier in your pregnancy is not necessarily an indication that you have to give birth at a certain week of pregnancy. All right, friends, I hope that was super helpful. Again, I am basing my recommendations off of the general recommendations by the, by the Society of Maternal Fetal Medicine and the American College of OBGYN and what I give as my recommendations for my patients. I had COVID at 24 weeks. If you wanna see my experience with that, then please watch that video. I'm linking it right now. I hope this is really helpful. Things will change over time. I think a lot of these recommendations, some people are doing in some places and some people are not. And sometimes that's part of a research or study protocol. So perhaps these recommendations might change over time. We'll just have to stay tuned and you'll have to subscribe so that you don't miss any important information. Thank you so much for joining me and I'll see you next week.